the first thing that we'd like them to to make themselves uh, uh, feel at home and if they feel a little bit um, out of place or feel a bit unsettled to let us know because we, we're here for them and we're here to help them and we will help them in those matters and we uh, as an elder I feel that I'm, I'm, that is my responsibility towards the teachers coming here. State School has approximately 22 to 23 teachers that are actively on class. We also have a lot of support personnel that go around and support teachers in class through the SEP program, through guidance, through coaching, also through uh, line management. The uh, elements that we also provide for education is from pre-prep all the way through to year 10. We are across the single campus and um, throughout the next few years we'll be looking at continuing to build up that junior secondary program. Uh, my key driver is very much around all children having access to a quality education that is based on the Australian curriculum and is very much compatible with them moving into any other area, any other place and space that they may wish to live in in the future and they have the skills and capabilities and capacity to be able to be part of that community. The high expectations that I, that I have on myself, that I have on my staff and on my students are very much driven around uh, students having the capacity and the ability to be able to achieve anything, anywhere and to become anything that they so choose. We would like to see the children, each child, come and attend school. It's their future. The critical and probably the most critical component in the first cab off the rank is always going to be around attendance. Attendance is very much driven around the way in which we build our relationships within community, the way in which we establish our relationships with students, the way in which we establish our classroom organisation, our classroom uh, field and that welcoming environment. Through those avenues if a teacher is able to really engage with their students in that relationship building and then from them to the families and build up that strength of relationship with community then that's really the most critical part of that um, part for us. The literacy and the numeracy that then follows on from that because if we can't have a relationship with the student, we're never going to create the learning and the capability that they may or may not have. Well, to come to us if they want to seek advice and support, you know, while they're here, mm. just come to both me and David here, and we'd, we'd be there to support them and, you know, even... Um, mm. Ari April down there and Eva, you know, the, the, the elders down there, come to them and and talk to them. But uh, I'd like the teachers, you know, if they're having problems, you know, here, or they feel uncomfortable or homesick and that, I'd encourage them to come to just, to, 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 to me and them. You know, just put a loving arms around them and, and say that we're here, you talk and I'll listen. For teachers to know about is to um, like meet us, myself, and Kathy, other elders, some other staff members in, in the school. By involving community within our school, we've developed those partnerships which are necessary to support success in education. Also, by developing and engaging with community, community takes an ownership of our school direction. Community takes an ownership of the success of all of our students. The main thing to learn about, uh, about the children's behaviour and to go to the village sometime yeah. and see parents and talk to parents, get to know the children and parents. It's really important if you want your club, if you want your kids to be at school, you need to know who their family is, you need to know them. 
Um, so what the way I have tried to get to know people is to get involved with things. You just want to be out there. You may not even talk to the parents of that child that's in your class, but they will see you and someone else will tell you, oh, so-and-so saw you at this and you know, rah, rah, rah. And next minute that kid's coming to school more regularly and they're more receptive to having conversations with you. Something that I really admire about the kids and the community is that wonderful family social network that they've got and they really care for one another and look out for one another. And if you're lucky they'll even welcome you into their families and you'll start to be called things like sister or, and that that for me has been a really important aspect of my work here. I'd like the teachers to have more connection with us too as grandparents, aunties and, and uncles and mimis and gangus, you know, just let them know what they call us in our Aboriginal way, you know. Teacher, this is my mimi here or this is my gangu, you know. So this year I'm Head of Curriculum. Um, as Head of Curriculum, I've been developing a lot of the whole school plans. Um, we work in a curriculum team environment. So we've got our Head of Department, Head of Curriculum and Literacy Coaches. And uh, we've been following a coaching model where um, we each teacher is assigned a curriculum coach and we'll work closely with teachers in their classrooms. The pedagogical approach that we actually use is the Doomingy State School I do, we do, you do approach. It was actually implemented last year and we're following through on that um, this year and um, the next couple of years. Um, the I do is the teacher modelling um, to, the, to the class. Um, it's very explicit in, um, in what you actually say for the students. Um, the we do is um, the teacher sharing uh, with the students and doing it with the students and the you do is the students independently um, following through on um, on the task. So it's that gradual release uh, model um, that's followed through throughout our lessons. Well, I think Neil, how, what, okay, Neil, I'm going to put it right there, you have to remember. Yeah, when I come to school every day and you know, I just to uh, be there for the kids and to be there for the teachers help the teachers to know the kids and help the kids to know their teacher, you know, and other adults that come into our school. So with our teacher aides, uh, we have one teacher aide assigned to a class for the year, um, and that's encouraging the teacher and the teacher aide to work really closely in building that relationship uh, with a community member. They're not only your lifeline in the classroom, but also links to the community. So if you want to go and see parents or even um, participate in activities on the weekends, going fishing, that teacher aid is your first port of call for many teachers. Uh, they, in the classroom, they know the kids, they may be an auntie to half the children, they might be a nana to the other half, they're, um, or an uncle, pa, they're a very, very valuable resource. We're very fortunate here at Dumaji State School because every classroom has a teacher aid. We get the teachers to actually start building relationships with um, the teacher aides because they are a vital, vital um, connection with the students. So um, sometimes new teachers coming in probably don't understand sometimes what the students are actually saying and your teacher aide can really help you. Um, and then it probably takes a week or two weeks for you to pick up on um, some of the on, on the language um, differences. Mm. The support that we do give you very much is around from that moment you walk off that plane, providing you with uh, welcome packs, providing you with your keys to your home and making sure that you're ready to get settled down. So it starts at that very initial level. Your support around being in a professional engagement, we do recognise as that fifth year of university. We do know 
that there are elements to what you don't know that you don't know you don't know them. So that is our job to support you in moving that. So you go through your first 12 months of uh, working as a professional, then we'll also be looking at that next step around how to do report cards, all that simplistic stuff. The support structures we, we have at school at the moment and we've got in this school is that we've got our line leaders that are always going to help beginning teachers. We've got second years or third years or experienced teachers in Doomagee who take the time and effort to help. So it's like that mentor, coach mentor, that, that relationship role. Um, we've also got you know, admin down. So we're here to actually help you, part of using that you know, performance plan to help you improve in all areas. The staff actually do the professional development plan and that informs our planning for professional development for the teachers. We do surveys and we also look at the needs of the students. Um, I don't believe in the myth that coming to a remote community will diminish my teaching skills or my outlook on teaching. Um, during my time here I have found that I have learnt a lot. Um, constantly, everyday behaviour management is a huge challenge at times to be honest, um, but every day is different and every day you learn something new. And I feel like when I do go back to a school in Brisbane, I will have an incredible set of skills to deal with anything that comes up. We encourage beginning teachers to participate in running um, PD at staff meetings um, and really get involved in a lot of leadership opportunities. Um, I applied for the head of curriculum role, um, which to me is a really exciting opportunity and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. We definitely have opportunities regularly for different specialists in the fields to come up and give us professional development. At the moment our focus is on reading so we're receiving a lot of professional development about reading and how to teach reading. First off, the, the accommodation in Dormagy is top class. Okay, you've got secure secure accommodation, um, certainly lockable storage as well. And the other thing about it is it's it's appointed well with uh, kitchenettes, lounges, uh, separate bedrooms for everybody, um, and certainly the quality of it is up to modern standards. So that's something that you can expect when you come here. To live and survive uh, in Dormagy, um, it, it's a it's a fine line. I said you, you've got to be here for the kids, so you're here for your job, your profession as a teacher. Um, you, you're here to ensure that these children are engaged and are coming to school. But outside of school, you've got to be able to have that time away where you feel comfortable, uh, you can relax. So getting over to Burketown or going to Adele's Grove or down to Gregory is a great way to relax. Um, getting involved in social activities with other teachers, getting involved with the community, going out bush, being able to hunt for guano or or chasing turtle or something down the river. Uh, there needs to be that, that line of you know, school and home life that you need to be able to adjust and, and work with accordingly. They need to know you know about to, where to, to, to go and what, what country and, and whose country that belongs to, you know, yeah. Gangalita or Waini or Yanyala or, or Garawa and all that, you know, because Garawa country that, that will look coast. But they got Clarence here. Clarence here, where he can just give them advice of saying, "Yeah, you you can go there, mate." Or mm. you know, they usually take them out. They usually take them mm. out, which is good. You know, just as long as they see Clarence here first, because he's the main one for over there, the Gungalida uh, tribe, mm. and uh, for over the coast side. Dumaji is extremely remote. Uh, when I first came up and I was on that plane and looking down <laughs> and um, seeing how remote it actually was, I was thinking, oh my goodness, what have I done? But when I got on the ground, you realise that all the teachers, they, they live very close to one another. So if you're not seeing each other at school, you'll see each other after school weekends. Um, it's a very tight knit community. You have full access to Telstra internet. Um, Telstra phone service, um, which is extremely reliable. Um, you'll get uh, C for T laptop, so you've always got that access with the internet and computers. Look, in your, in your free time here, you have a lot of opportunities to engage in different activities, and it really is what you make it. 
So, for example, uh, we have afternoon sports sometimes. So, um, like aerobics or yoga or, th or things like that. Or you can go for, for walks. And that can be quite a social activity or um, a really good way to de-stress. And then on the weekends, uh, often we'll go to, say, a nearby town such as Burketown. Or there's lots of national parks, lots of events in the area such as rodeos and camp drafts. And if you're from the city, uh, this is really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be able to, to really experience a different version of Australia than what you're used to at home. So uh, that, that really has been a fantastic thing about staying here. The skills and characteristics that we, we really do want from our teaching staff is very much around that flexibility. We recognise that many people who come out to our school are going into what we call a fifth year of university that we really are focused on understanding where they're at with their knowledge and experiences that they previously had may or may not fit 100% with what our cultural and school context is. So we really do focus on the coaching. We really want teachers who can engage with that, teachers who can have the resilience to be able to recognise that they are in a remote community, but then also recognise that it is not an isolation. It is a once in a lifetime experience that they will never have again and also that it is a place where they will be able to spend a, a number of years and it will become very firmly entrenched within them as a place. Well the reasons I came was because I thought I could make a difference and even if it was just in one kid's life I thought that would be worth it. So the importance of consulting with family, the importance of making your family, whether they be your parents or your brothers and sisters, as part of that decision is really part of the foundations of having a successful move. Connectivity through Facebook, through the internet and all those other elements means that you're in daily contact with your family and you have all of those elements that support you now are going to be able to be provided here just in a very distant setting. The key advice about coming up here to Doomagee, first of all, is uh, to be yourself when you come up here. Um, the kids uh, are really intuitive and they'll know if you're, if you're um, not being yourself. And I think that when they see who you, you are, they really engage with that. And that's when you form those really deep relationships with the students. I think that it's also really important to bring our positive attitude, uh, including a sense of humour when you come up here because things can get quite serious if you're living in a fishbowl and, uh, and you've got a lot, of, a lot of work on. So I think positive attitude is, is uh, very important. And the last thing, I think courage is, is uh, a wonderful asset up here. You know, you need courage to be able to uh, engage with the community uh, that is unfamiliar to you, different culture, and really put yourself out there and go and make relationships with, uh, with the community. Uh, they, they are very welcoming when they see that you're really making an effort. Look, it's important we have our teachers come here. You know, when they come here to teach our children, we'd like them to learn, you know, from our kids too. It really is a beautiful, beautiful town. It, the people are beautiful. They're so welcoming. Um, the stories you actually see on YouTube are incorrect, <laughs> um, which is devastatingly such a shame to actually see that um, portrayed like that. But um, quite the opposite is actually true. So when you're, when, I guess when you're a teacher and you're coming to Dumaji, you will absolutely love it. You will love it. You'll love the community. You'll love the support that is in place in the school with the teachers, with each other. Uh, and you'll love teaching the children. That's the main thing that you will absolutely love. Once you teach here, you are absolutely set for when you go back to Brisbane or the sunny coast. Yeah. Are we we don't say the word welcome, okay. or there's a word, we say go or the come. Come my friend, come. That, that's how 
the old people in the early days welcome, come, and that person comes and feel welcome, sit down, you know, down the, down the knee, just sit down beside me, something like that. That's what they used to The Gangrela people would say, Gawad, come, meet in the Maya my friend, come.